Hey, what's up everyone? In this lesson video, you will uh, learn about the uh, concrete placement equipment uh, and operations. We have four learning objectives for, the, for you in this lesson, uh, so let's get started. Uh, please refer to the lesson video in concrete work uh, scopes uh, and quantities. It's not a hard prerequisite for this uh, video but you will be uh, more familiar with uh, some terms that we will use uh, here. Concrete placement in involves mixing, hauling, pouring, and consolidating the concrete. Let's have a brief overview of uh, each process and its equipment. Mixing is done in batches with uh, known proportions of the mix ingredients. Uh, the mixing can be done in a central mixing plant or in transit. This is a photo of a, uh, an on-site concrete mixing plant that is uh, common in remote, remote projects with large concrete quantities. The shown silos show, uh, store the cement and the aggregates where they are added to the mixer in the middle. Larger and more sophisticated versions of this plant can be in a central location to provide ready-mixed uh, concrete commercially to different projects. These are compact concrete mixers for small remote sites. Concrete can be mixed in transit uh, inside the truck uh, tanks. We need to differentiate between truck transit mixers and agitator trucks. They uh, look uh, the same, but agitator trucks only haul the concrete that's already mixed, and they are larger in, uh, in size. The ready or transit mixed uh, concrete can be ordered using different approaches. A mix design or recipe can be provided by uh, the customer to the batch plant. Specific performance requirements can be specified for the batch plant staff to work out uh, into uh, a mix design, or a hybrid of both approaches can be adapted. Most of the concrete holding is done using agitator, agitator non-mixing trucks. Uh, dump trucks can be used to hold concrete in case of mass placement, like in dams or uh, concrete paving. There are many ways to pour the concrete in its place. In small and tight sites, uh, buggies, uh, either manual or motorized, can be used to receive the concrete from a mixing location or a hauling truck and deliver it to the pouring spot. Uh, shots uh, are commonly used to pour small grade slabs and drop pipes um, are used to pour concrete in low elevations or under uh, water. Concrete buckets uh, are lifted using mobile or uh, tower cranes in heights or locations where concrete cannot be delivered with other uh, more efficient uh, methods like pumping. Conveyors are helpful, helpful in delivering and pouring the concrete to spots far away from the access points. Accessibility issues can also be resol resolved with uh, concrete pumps. Truck-mounted uh, pumps uh, are becoming one of the favorite pouring equipment due to its versatility and mobility. The truck is equipped with uh, a Hooper uh, uh, to receive, uh, sorry, equipped with a hooper to receive the concrete from the concrete trucks and feed the concrete to the pump that pushes it through pipes to the pouring crew. Similar to cranes, stability of the uh, pump truck is uh, and during, du during pumping is maintained using uh, outriggers. For every job, uh, the pump truck operator should uh, check the site conditions and consult with, uh, with the truck manual 
like the one shown here to confirm that the truck can reach to the required radius and elevation of the farthest pouring spot and make sure that the side space is available to extend the pump, pump outriggers. Concrete pumps can be uh, stationary uh, and this is commonly used in uh, tall, tall structures like bridges and high-rise buildings. It has the same anatomy of the pump truck but uh, at much larger scale and power. The actual pump is located in the ground level in a spot that's accessible to the concrete trucks. The pipe, uh, pipes from the pump can be split into multiple delivery lines using hydraulic gates. Then the horizontal lines deliver to the uh, riser pipes. Uh, then finally the concrete is delivered to a placing boom on a mast at the top of the structure. The boom extends to cover the whole structural uh, footprint. The final step of the concrete placement is to consolidate it and make sure it fills all the concrete void, uh, all the formwork void. This is done using mechanical vibrators, which uh, should be used carefully to avoid segregating the concrete uh, mix or loosen the rebar. Let's check this example to show uh, one of the ways uh, to analyze the production of concrete placement. The example follows a specific concrete placement operation that involves mixing concrete on site using a remote concrete mixer, delivering the concrete using a crane and placing it in a buggy. The size of every delivered batch is quarter cubic meters. These are the estimated times for the different steps performed by the different equipment uh, or crews. We can visualize the operation steps using an activity cycle diagram where we can clearly see the cycles of each individual uh, resource. For example, the mixer uh, performs its cycle of mixing, discharge, and uh, loading. We can see these cycles intersect in two spots. The crane and mixer are both needed in this step, this charge, where the batch is handed from the mixer to the crane bucket. Also, the crane and the placement crews, uh, crew both perform the dump task. We will use the multiple, multiple activity chart to track the progress of each resource in its own operation step. Uh, steps and identify the cycle time of the whole operation. We can see on the left side the three main resources and the timeline on the top of the chart. We applied before multiple activity chart and the earthwork hauling lesson. Please refer to this lesson for more detailed explanation on the use of this tool. We complete the chart for only one cycle and we see that all the tasks were covered uh, and the last one finishes in 12.5 minutes. Is this the end of the first cycle or does this mean that the cycle of the whole operation is 12.5 minutes? To answer this question, let's draw another cycle from where we stopped. I think you can see or recognize that we can actually start the second cycle earlier than minute 12 and a half, right? So let's try to squeeze and stack the second cycle to the left. It's like the Tetris game. It's a serious problem if you don't know how to play or if you don't know Tetris, Google it. Now we can see that uh, we can stack the two cycles as shown. This means that the second cycle starts while the first one didn't uh, even finish yet. This means that I cannot consider 12 and a half minutes as our operation cycle time. We can conclude here that the operation cycle time is the maximum of the individual resource cycle times, which is the placement crew cycle in this case. This means that the placement crews utilize 100% of the working time 
the mixer and crane are not fully utilized. The mixer is 50% utilized and the crane is only 37.5% utilized. We can now move to calculating the productivity of the operation by dividing the batch size that's delivered in uh, every cycle by or over the cycle time. This results in an hourly production of 1.875 cubic meters or uh, 15 cubic meters per day, assuming 8 hours daily shift. Oh no, what if we aren't set, are not satisfied with this production rate? You can increase the cycle output or decrease the cycle time. Uh, the cycle output can be increased by using a larger mixer or bucket. The cycle time can be reduced by picking a better spot for the tower crane with less travel times. Or we can add a second placement crew as it is the one that's, uh, that controls the cycle time and, utilize, and is utilized 100% of the time. Here's the chart with two crews. Much better setting, right? You can see that the mixer and placement crews are continuously busy with no idle time. The operation cycle time is still 8 minutes and it is controlled by both of them. All of the resources are now fully utilized except for the crane which is which its utilization got doubled with the, with the second placement crew. Even we ended the same cycle time, even we ended with the same cycle time, we doubled uh, the productivity because we doubled the uh, cycle output to be two concrete batches. This is an example analysis of a specific concrete placement setting. However, you can still apply the same analysis approach for any operation setting as long as you uh, can recognize the resources their cycles and represent them in multiple activity charts. Concrete pavements uh, is the last topic we will cover in this lesson. It's very similar to asphalt paving, so I recommend watching that lesson to contrast between the two operations. Concrete pavements are common in airports and highways with high truck uh, traffic uh, traffic volumes. Concrete pavements are constructed using concrete slip forms. These two photos show the size range of the slip form. The smaller and the uh, uh, other photo, uh, the top photo, uh, constructs a segment of a concrete uh, pavement road. And the huge and the lower photo is constructing a taxiway in an airport. Similar to asphalt pavements, it's important to synchronize the paver speed uh, with the production and delivery of the concrete mix. The shown formula relates uh, the concrete paver production with its speed, which is very similar to the one we used in the asphalt paver. However, it's a simpler formula as the concrete is measured in volumes over its production phases, unlike asphalt uh, that's measured in both weight and volume. The second formula uh, is the focus uh, is the famous balance point equation to find the number of trucks needed to cover the paver production rate. Please check the exercise video on concrete paving. Thanks for watching and enjoy your time.